This episode of What the Tech is brought to you by the Powerful Answers Award, presented by Verizon. It's an amazing opportunity for entrepreneurs to win up to $1 million to help solve the world's biggest problems. To win, submit your idea by June 18th to verizon.com slash powerful answers slash award. Hey, everybody. Welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by Mr. Paul Thorat. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. Pretty good. We're doing the show a little early today, an hour early. Uh, I got a meeting with my lawyer, and that's always fun, isn't it? <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds great. It sounds like a I great could, time. So come along. I... Yeah. Uh, those conversations are never fun. Uh, th- this It's actually, it's a little tiny thing I got to do. I got to change some paperwork around. Um but how you doing? Everything's good? You enjoyed your weekend? You had a nice Memorial Day uh, weekend? I need every day to be Memorial Day weekend. You, you know, know I, do you, I, I don't like really the Mondays do. off. It, you know, it messes me up. Like, all day today, I think it's Monday. No, see, a three-day weekend is the gift that keeps on giving because <laughs> the weekend of the weekend, it's awesome because you're off for three days. And then you go back to work, and that kind of stinks. But it's only four days long that week. It's awesome. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess so. I, I mean, it's just getting back to work on Tuesday. Not like I really have to go get back to work on a Tuesday, but the whole concept of I have to get stuff done, uh, it throws me off because mon- Mondays I get everything done and Tuesdays I just wait to talk to you and that's the end of my day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I just wait by the phone. It's just been a surprise. I wait by the Skype. Um, I wait by the Skype. Yeah. Did you, uh, before we get into the notes, I was reading this. Mm-hmm. I forgot where I got it. Somebody sent me a link and it was saying that Windows 10 runs better on. Yeah, that's the... an that's an idiotic uh, okay. opinion and I don't want to discuss that. Okay. okay. It <laughs> just not, came to mind. It is literally not true. Okay. It literally cannot be true. And okay. I'm glad that he likes the way it's running. But what I'll tell anyone who runs uh, Windows on a Mac in boot camp is that a simple phrase, wait for it. Because all those little third-party utilities you're doing that make things work properly, they actually stop working over time. So have fun with that. But the the problem is it can't happen because Apple limits the way that you can apply Windows to the disk, so it can never run as efficiently as Mac OS X does. It's literally hobbled by design. That's how Apple does it. Well, Apple is Apple's doing it to their own stuff. Like if if you change the the SSD on mm-hmm. the MacBook Pro, like the one I have, uh, it yeah. doesn't have trim enabled. They disabled it for third-party hard drives on the Mac. Yeah. Yep. And I, I just don't understand. Like, why would you do that? Why would you? Why? Uh, Apple is a complicated animal. I don't know. That's, I mean, there's obviously a workaround it. You could do stuff to it. There's a code. You could do something, put, it, put something in terminal and get it to work. It's a whole thing. But why would you do that? You enable it on your own stuff, but you, you dis- disable it on third-party stuff. It's just like, hey, screw you, you know? It is literally, it's not like, <laughs> it is literally, screw hey, you. screw you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, Paul, before we get into it, I want to talk about Google I.O. for a little bit. Um, okay. Google I.O. is coming up. I totally forgot about Google I.O. I totally forgot it was coming up. Uh, it's, yeah. And it's bizarre that I forgot because every year I look forward to it because I'm always anticipating a really good, like, Google TV and, yep. or anything else and it was actually quite lackluster about the google tv announcement the um the Andro- android tv announcement that i really don't care as much as i normally have in recent years but uh, I, I just think as time goes by it's like eh, like you hear apple like apple's like we're not going to do a tv and like you, you find like they did have plans to make a tv and then realize it's ridiculous for all the reasons anyone looking into this would realize it's ridiculous and uh, not that this is exactly the same thing, but I think at at some point you just have to say the stuff that they have sort of works. There's stuff out there, you know, that sort of works, and they don't really need a literally Google TV like the analog to Apple TV. It's it's fine, you know. I think you, if you want Google content in your living room, you can get it there. I, yeah, and I have a whole point about this, but uh, I'm going to hold off on it, and we're going to talk about our latest sponsor, and that's the Powerful Answers Award presented by Verizon. This is actually an amazing opportunity. Um, for entrepreneurs, we have we have a lot of viewers that uh, have their own startups, have their own companies. They're uh, innovators, they're inventors. There's a it's a huge amount of of viewers that we have that 
uh, are really making some change. And this actually is something for you guys. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur, your company is innovating around the world, uh, coming up with products that could help save people's lives and help uh, fix the world's problems. This is actually a really interesting uh, concept that they have. Verizon is committing to advancing technologies and driving innovation beyond its core services. So what they've done, uh, they've set up uh, th this amazing thing where you could win up to $1 million for an innovative solution in the area of transportation, emergency response, and the Internet of Things. That is the word of 2015, guys. In Internet of Things. Not Last Linux on a desktop? <laughs> no, Lin no Lin Linux on a desktop will not, will not win you the million dollars for an innovative solution. Uh, last year's awards, for example, Paul, a smartphone for people with disabilities, a new mm -hmm. organ donation program that reduces the wait time, eco-friendly charcoal for Africa, and better storage for vaccines. So Linux on the desktop may not qualify you to win. Uh, this is how you could do it. If you or your company has an innovative solution that could help impact, uh, make an impact on the world, submit your idea now through June 18th to verizon.com slash powerful answers slash award. All submission details could be found on the website, obviously. Um, and uh, it's, it's actually a really cool, uh, really cool thing that they're doing. I, I looked at some of the stuff from last year. Uh, actually, let me see if I can pull it up here. So here's our website. So this is how you go and you submit it. Um, and you have different, you know, different categories. It's a, and you just go through it. These were last year's winners right here. If you want to find out what they did that, uh, that awarded them the prize. Uh, thank you to uh, the guys at Verizon for creating this, for presenting this award. Uh, the Powerful Answers Award presented by Verizon. We want to thank them for supporting what the talk and the GFK Network. Uh, there we go. That was a cool read, Paul. <laughs> nicely done nicely done like pat on the back for me no it's actually you know it makes it so much easier when it's a it's a really cool idea like this uh and the thing something that the viewers would be interested in because a lot of our viewers are smart i don't know if you know that paul we took a <laughs> uh we took a poll a couple years ago on our website it was a survey done by pod track and i was blown away either people are lying about how smart they are and the amount of money they make or uh, we got millionaires watching. They're so, lying liars they're who lie. Liars. <laughs> it's, all, it's all 13 year old children. Yeah, exactly. Just watching to troll us. That, that's exactly what it is. Uh, let's talk about Google I.O. a little bit. Um, it, do you feel that way too? Like this year, I don't really feel like, uh, like Android, uh, Android M, right? That's their next mm -hmm. operating system, which, uh, we don't know the name. Apparently it's Macadamia Nut Cookie. Yeah, I think that's what is it is. That, yeah. Is that real? Because I heard that and I said, that is the dumbest name I've ever heard. That's my understanding is that's the name. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it, it's in keeping, you know. I, I'd seen someone had like a picture of a bag of marshmallows, like it must be marshmallow. But I think I believe it is. M&M's? Maybe M&M's? Yeah. Sure. But they would have had to have paid for that. And I'm guessing they said no. I guess. I guess that's what it was. Um, Android, um, they're, they're not really, there's not a lot of information that came up about it. Uh, beyond they're going to fix bugs. It's going to get a little bit better with performance. Obviously, I think we're in that stage right now with operating systems. Uh, Windows 10 is the only one, really, that's going to make some sort of drastic change from the prior version. Right. Um, you know, especially to their UI and core functionality. They're making some major changes. I don't think Google or an Apple are going to be doing this over the next, you know, year. Uh, they're just working on performance changes. But Lollipop was a... Pretty big upgrade from the prior version. It was big right. enough where they don't have to do it anymore. I mean, I could tell you right now that. Uh, Actually, I was I was going to say the same. I mean, I, sorry to interrupt, but no, real no, quick, no. What, what do you think of the notion of? I would put this out to both Apple and uh, and, and Google. Um, and maybe this is the, maybe the I, I believe they're sort of positioning this as a minor upgrade, uh, uh, Android M, right? Let's not give it a letter. Let's call it five point two. Let's use this one to get it right. Like, why don't we spend the next year fixing things, filling in holes, letting the user base catch up? On Android in particular, you've got uh, people on all these different versions. I mean, why why are we forging ahead to some new version number? Like, let's yeah. let's just you know use this. And, and I would put this on, uh, to Apple in a different way too, because there I think you alluded to this uh, or had started to talk about this. The notion that Apple's going to do kind of the same thing with iOS, you know. To, um, uh, let it work on older devices, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's nice. But Apple is more of like a hardware company, right? Yeah. I mean, 
why do we have to have a new iPhone this holiday season, right? Like, instead of, why don't they just keep the iPhone 6 in the market, and 6 Plus, and then they could either 6C, and maybe the new one could come out in the spring. Why don't they stretch it out to 18 months? It seems like they have a wellspring of interest in this product that people will upgrade to this product when their contracts, you know, end or whatever, and that they could milk this one for longer than a year. I mean, why... Well, is they, there some enduring problem with the iPhone as it is right now that needs to be fixed in September? Well, I guess – well, here's a good question, okay? So the contracts are two years. They're 24-month contracts. So it has to be on a yearly uh, – okay. it, right? Yeah. It has to be on a yearly well, but every, schedule. But everyone's contract's sense. different. I guess every, what I'm yeah. saying is uh, – I, I just saw an, some analysts had made the comment that there was a lot of headroom left in iPhone 6 sales, that they will see stronger than usual sales throughout this year because – Partially because other people are coming off contract in the next six months, and they all want to upgrade to this one. Where that's not always the case. A yeah. lot of um, a lot of years, uh, customers will look at the iPhone that's in the market at the time and say, "Eh, I think I'm going to wait until the next big one hits." You know. Well, I guess here, here's the thing: if your mm -hmm. contract is expiring, right? I guess they're going with the assumption that people get these phones on release dates or release week or release month. So the majority of iPhone users get it in that time period. And yeah. if they don't release a new iPhone every, you know, 12 to 24 months based on the contract, for those people, they may jump over. Oh, no, over. but they are would. Are they going to wait? I, I guess or what I'm gonna, saying is... You know, that's the would, question. Right? They would. They would wait. Yeah, I think so, would. too. I think so, too. So, you know, I mean, I, look, uh, it doesn't matter what Apple does in September. As a percentage, as a raw number, almost no one is going to upgrade from an iPhone 6 to an iPhone 6S, whatever it's called, whatever, yeah. 6S or whatever. Um, These are the iPhone 5 users. Right. Especially if they retain the body style, which they tend to do, which they should do, I would say, because honestly, I think they've hit something near perfect with this one, but whatever. Um, and, I, and I know this click pad stuff coming or, and, you know, whatever other things, the small improvements to the camera and that kind of stuff. But I, I honestly feel like, I, I like the news that I heard about Apple that they were going to take this time to make the OS work better on older devices. Which it works. Have you have you used an, uh, the latest version on an iPad too? The latest version? You mean the beta version or the no, no the the latest version of the current operating system? So what is it? Uh, nine? No, no eight, I, I mean eight, my eight, daughter still eight? uses an iPad too, okay. but well, you're, you're telling me is, it's garbage. It's it is. Brutal. Okay, but you understand that the the one of the big knocks against Apple over the past several years has been that they do this on purpose, right? That they never optimize for the older devices so because they're forcing yeah. obsolescence. They, what they want is for you to buy a new device. That's how they make money. The notion that they might the the notion that some company would say, "Look, we already make more money than every other every company on earth combined." Almost, um, we don't need it. It's okay. We're gonna do. We're gonna match what we create for, within software to the actual buying practices of our customers, which in the case of iPads in particular, is to hang on to them for much longer than they do with a phone. I think a phone two years is about right. An iPad maybe four or five years. Four or five years. Four, what's four or five years ago? It's like the first iPad. Well, when when you no, know, I, it came out when twenty eleven. Twenty ten was the first one. Yeah, so it is four years. Yeah, yeah. iPad two is well, four five years. years. I mean, five, it's been four years since the iPad two. Yeah. Yeah. If if they could, I, and I think the iPad two is a it's it's a it's a really thin device. It's got that big bezel that I know you love, and it has a, a it it doesn't have like a, a retina screen, but it has a I, I think it's, it's a good enough. It's like yeah. a nice it's something you can give to a kid. And not worry. My about. wife she has an iPad two that was given to her from her job, and mm -hmm. that's what she uses. She's fine with her iPad two. She she doesn't really for what she does it's okay. But the problem with the iPad two is it's. And yes, it's four years old. I get it. But it is, for with every version, yeah. it is so brutal. And right. there are people that are, that are going to say, well, you know what? Four years is long enough. Well, if, if you had the same experience on your laptop, on a, you know, a, a right. decent mid to high range laptop, oh, that would be unacceptable. four years, the, the manufacturer, Samsung or Asus or Lenovo, said, yeah, you know what? Uh, it's obsolete now with software updates. Sorry. You're not going to get the same performance. You're going to get really um, angry. Here's, here's what would make that okay. If the iPad 2 cost you know, $200 when it was new. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? The problem is an iPad 2 when it was new or a new iPad, whatever they're called now, an iPad Air 2 is $500 or $600 or $800. I mean, these are really expensive machines. Because 16 gig, nobody, you, you cannot get a 16 gig. That's a, that's a. Even if you could, you shouldn't get, I mean, you're saying no, no, you can't, in you the should. sense that, in the sense that you can't do anything with a 16 gig anymore. No, it's abs- and unless, not, unless, yeah. And, and I, I went on this rant yesterday, uh, last week. And you saw, I put it on Twitter, and I got so much crap for it where people are saying, well, I thought you were a cloud guy. Like, or no, uh, what are you putting on it. here? And, and not, I have to explain way, to them, no. some of these apps are a gig and a half. I, I run into this all the time. And you, The core you know, OS has taken four gigs. Right. You would just said, you know, like I had a re- I, I deleted Microsoft Word. You know, it's like, of course you did. Like, it's just sitting there taking up space. 700 you know? megs, Microsoft Word. Yeah. So you're If you look at their there. new product lines, if you look at their new devices... What you'll see is they always go from 16 to 64, right? Yeah. The 64 is what everyone should have. That I mean, so they can say, well, we sell an iPad Mini 3 for $399. But really, I mean, unless you're either seriously uneducated about what's happening here or I don't know why you would buy a 16. I mean, I can't even imagine. I'm going to tell awful. you something. My, it's really $499. I, I, was, I never thought it would be that much of a problem to have a 16 gig because i didn't anticipate the file size of these applications to expand to the point that yeah, it has it, they, because obviously more well, by the way that's intense, the other more, problem with the retina screens that's yeah. why they're so big yeah they're pumping i mean thousands of pickles on the screens it's it's somewhat pointless i mean i yeah. i don't know i, I could i couldn't do it that. I just sat there and I just deleted everything. I deleted everything. I have. What's the cheap iPad now? Like the um, the mini. Well, I mean the big size one. So you, it's literally iPad Air and iPad Air two. Is yeah, that, that, what you, that yeah. Those are the choices. Yeah. I mean, and the Air is great. It, sure, but you know, so really the entry level price for this thing is four hundred and forty nine dollars. So let's see. And that's for a thirty two gig version. All right, so let's see. Sell. If I'm getting the iPad Air two. Six hundred bucks. Uh, Six hundred dollars, sixty-four gig. Six hundred bucks. That's a lot of money. And it is a lot of money, and I think it's reasonable for people to expect that purchase to last as long as other technology products that cost six hundred bucks, i.e., a laptop. So uh, four years, I think, is is not too much to ask. You know. Anyway, I I'm kind of dumping on them for this. This is an old story. We all know this. Yeah. I. I if the rumors are true that iOS nine, which shouldn't be called iOS nine, God, I mean, how about eight point five and just call, you know the cleanup apology release? <laughs> they could just make this thing run acceptable on these older devices, make it take up less space. Which is something Microsoft has worked on with Windows, right? I applaud that. I, I hope that that's true. I really want that to be true. I, I hope it's true too, um, because it kind of gives a sense of well, I could I could buy this thing. And know it, I could use it for the next five years. Sure. Um, and listen, there are people out there, and, and we're a little jaded in this community because we like to go and buy stuff and knock on wood. I could go and afford to buy another iPad if I wanted to, but that, just because I can doesn't mean that I should. Um, and there are people that can't do that. And it's kind of a, you know, a kick in the face when you have something that's three years old and all of a sudden you get the latest update and it is brutal to use. Uh, hmm. It it would not you can you would not tolerate this on the PC. Technically, with every release of Windows, you're getting better performance on older hardware. That's yeah, how it always I mean, been. And, and right, and that like I said, like except that's for Vista. I, I mean, Vista, forget it. But beyond well, okay, Vista, but, but I appreciate that they've done that. Like I think that's really cool. Yeah. So I and if Apple were to do it, I would think that would be really cool too. I, they have so many customers, it would be such a good PR move. You know, uh, iPad sales are going to naturally follow whatever life cycle that they follow. Whether no matter what Apple adds to iPad Air three this year, who cares? You know, it's there. It's not. There's no thing coming that's going to make iPad Air owners upgrade. So why not support those guys? Yeah, because before you were upgrading regardless, right? Because there were major changes between the iPad and the iPad two. That was a tremendous jump in you know specs or you, and, and i mean at that hardware. point maybe you were just getting new customers i'm actually not positive anyone was really ever upgrading from device to device but uh it doesn't matter like i mean it, the the current state of the business is that people don't do that um except I, if you're forced into like phones and it's also I mean, disposable iPad, yeah. you know yeah. like I, I think with the ipad and tablets and phones we 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 don't we tolerate 
the fact that the performance kind of gets crappier and crappier with every release and the more you use it because we look at it as disposable hardware. We don't look at it as, okay, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to use this for a couple of years. Right. You know, laptops are a little different because you're investing money into it. But I mean, even with laptops, now we have 399 laptops and some people right. really don't care to have the highest end thing. They just throw this thing away after two years and they get a new one. They give it to somebody else. Well, I mean, I think, you know, look, the math is going to be a little bit different for everybody. And and I, I, I would like to think that I at least have my mind open to, the pe you know, people who just can't afford things. But I think for a lot of us, if you spend $200, maybe $300 on a laptop or a Chromebook or anything that costs that much money, um, you know, a couple of years of usage, of actual usage out of that from an adult is probably okay, you know. But when you start moving up to 400, 500, 600, 800, you know, um, that's, it becomes kind of an investment. Like I think people expect that thing to last. They expect it to last and then they expect to hand it off to someone else who's going to keep using it too. Yeah. You know, and I think it's just a different kind of product. And I think Apple in particular, uh, because they're selling a certain kind of level of quality, I think they need to be smart about that too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. How do so we, I think I think that it sounds like they are. I mean, I'm yeah. trying to trying yeah, to be the, positive here. Right? Yeah, with the latest, with the next version. I mean, that's what. They, and and I think their event is yeah. what in two weeks. Which one? The Apple uh, one? Yeah, WWDC. WWDC. Yeah. I actually, do not know when that is. It's in June. Obviously. June sixth or eighth or ninth. Is it really that early? That's yeah. That's great. Yeah. June eight to twelve. Yeah. That's good. That's so, not that long. It's yeah. in two weeks. So it's in two weeks, uh, which we're going to be do doing coverage here at the network, guys. Uh, every year we do the Apple events, uh, and people ask us, why do you only do Apple and you don't do the other guys? Because nobody watches the other ones. <laughs> that, that's, that's the honest truth. Nice. We nice. have done it. We've done Microsoft events. We've done Google events, and nobody cares to watch it. So we yeah. do the Apple ones because it's interesting, and people are interested in it, and I see a lot of people's perspective on it in the chat room, and uh, that's why we continue doing it. So we're going to do that. Uh, Google I.O. is coming up in two days, uh, Android M, and I'm surprised we have not gotten a lot of the leaked information about Android M. There's been some stuff. I mean, um... not as much. I mean, we're not. It, I mean, the, the refocus apparently is going to be based on battery technology and it's going to give you better battery life. Uh, it's going to optimize RAM better. So these applications aren't, you know, killing the RAM on the phones. Yep. Uh, it's not as... We're, but I like that stuff. That's I do what too. I like to yeah, I, mean, I do too. I, you know, I think you mentioned Android uh, L or the Android 5.0 was, uh, you know, material design. It was kind of the big bang release. It was their version of iOS 7 or whatever, uh, as far as like a new UI user experience, whatever. I think um, you're going to have to, because I'll tell you something. The battery life on Android L on Lo in Lollipop is not that good. Um, they did not do a good job with battery optimization. Uh, I'm having a lot of problems with the Samsung, and it could be Samsung, it could be the other one, but I've installed uh, L on all my devices, and I'm noticing that the battery life is not that great on them. Right. You know, it's a little disappointing to see what the battery life is. Uh, they have cleaned up, you know, I'm going to tell you something. For years, I've been really critical of Android, and I'm an Android user, and I feel like with the last version, they really, really cleaned up a lot of these issues and a lot of the installations. A lot of the stability issues that they've been having over the last, I don't know, four years. I, I mean, I don't use Android enough to have an opinion about the battery life issues that may or may not, you know, be in Android 5. Um, I still find myself just, you know, like kind of uninterested in it. <laughs> I, find, I, I feel weird about that because I really do feel like uh, Android is you know, the windows of the mobile world. I mean, it's the same thing. Lots of hardware makers, lots of choices, wide open ecosystem, you know, the ability to really go nuts and attack the hardware if you want to. Yeah. And it doesn't uh, matter what the hardware is. Anybody can make it. Yeah. Um, and I just don't really find myself all that. I still, I, I still can't get super excited about it. I don't know is there I'm anything gonna... you're excited about Android at all? You like the Nexus 5. I like the Nexus 5. I, I think it's, I think we, I don't know if we just talked about this, but I, I find it notable that uh, those two previous gen Nexus devices, the Nexus 5 phone and the Nexus 7 tablet, I thought were really solid. And Nexus 6 doesn't do anything for me. And Nexus 9, which I own, is like, I never use it. I really, I'm very disappointed in it. And, and uh, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I, I you know, it's sort of like the, um, the Pixel is kind of like this. It, I don't think they're attacking the right part of the market. I think Android is the mainstream. It's not the upper echelon. And I just don't think they do that well because the ecosystem is too scattered. 
Um, people who buy kind of pedestrian phones from whatever carrier because two years are up and don't they're not looking for big brands. They're just looking for whatever the good deal is at the time. You know, they're buying Android phones. They don't really care. I, and I, I, I know that they want high quality and they want it to be better and they want it to be good design. And I sort of appreciate all that stuff. But I really think the, the basics are more important. And so I say that without, I mean, I'm never going to use the thing. It doesn't really matter. But I mean, I don't know. I just, I look at this, I mean, I'll pay attention to it. I'll watch the Google I.O. stuff. I'm, I, I am, of course, curious about what they're doing. And I don't know. So the, you, you brought up something, something interesting that they're like, the, um, they're like the windows of the mobile world. And that's absolutely true. We, um, one of our viewers uh, is an app developer, FConsoft mm-hmm. on Twitter. And he developed an Android app for us. And it's on Android. It's on the tablets. It's on uh, uh, Android TV and on Amazon Fire TV. He just he just updated the application. I have a picture here of uh, my TV in my living, in my bedroom. But I went to go use it, and you know what? It's a seamless experience on all the platforms, and that's what the pro is. You could you could develop an application. And it could be on all these different devices. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's Samsung or or HTC. They're all running the same ecosystem, and they're all running the same apps essentially so that's the pro there but I, I for me when it comes to stability i still think that ios is far more stable than android is they've gotten a lot better but overall stability for me i, I still stand by ios yeah uh, that says I, I, I would say especially since tip, uh, tim cook took over and maybe especially since ios 8 i mean it seems like th- there's a lot of stuff i don't like about ios uh, I'm amazed they're still on grid of icons. I mean, uh, this many years later, we're still looking at grids with little numbered, you know, overlays on them instead of actual live notifications on the screen. But um, I'm predicting his, it right now. I'm predicting it right now. The next version of iOS is not going to mm-hmm. have the 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 square box. It's going to be all circles for the apps. All circles. All circles. Not uh, rounded rectangles. No, not rent all circles. That would be the final nail in the coffin. That's maybe a right, <laughs> terrible <laughs> phrase to use. Uh, for the kind of design aesthetic that, um, you know, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs was yeah. pushing. I mean, but we've moved away from that, haven't we? The rounded, rounded corners. Mm, we have. I mean, what do you mean we? I, 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 as Circles. I mean, who, I, I, I mean I, iOS still has rounded rectangles. I don't know. It's gonna, they're going to go away from it. That's going to be the major shift in iOS 9. <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at flat design like iOS 8 has or like Android 5 has or like Windows has, um, I actually think that lends itself better to squares, squared yeah. up shapes, you know. Um, not to mention the fact that it's a better use of real estate. And it, it's also a, a better surface on which to put notifications that are textual in nature, you know. Yeah, circles are in the avatar and the contact list on iOS 8 right now. And MFB in our chat room says diamonds. We need it to be diamonds. 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 So this, uh, in uh, Windows 10 time frame, one of the design tenets that Microsoft has, which, by the way, they might have, I don't want to say copied from Apple, but you know, kind of come to the same conclusion as Apple on, is the notion that circles are people, you know, ah. which is why you see circles on things that are people. So when you log into a... Uh, Windows 10 PC just as when you log into a Mac, right? The picture is in a circle. It's not in a rounded rectangle. It's not in a square. Um, the contact list, a, a list of um, you know people in a message, like a messaging conversation, circles. You know, um, I, I don't. How do you? You know, I don't know why. I think some people are blockheads. And I want everything to go circles. I want everything. Everything to go should circles. be circles. I mean, isn't it circles on on the watch? Yep. The Apple Watch UI is all circles. So. I want just. Do we really think that the Apple Watch uh, UI has any legs at all, though? I mean, it almost looks like an experiment. I think let's it is. see. Let's see how people react to this. Well, I think when you're a company like Apple, you know that people are going to buy it anyway because it it goes inside of your ecosystem. It connects to everything that you already have. So the people that are buying it, it's a first-gen device. It is an experiment, and all these first-gen devices are an experiment. Uh, that's how I see it. If you're buying a first-gen device, you're pretty much a, a glorified beta tester for the company to know what to fix and what you're not using and what to remove and add. I Listen, I have a newsflash. You know, we are that for all of these <laughs> for companies. For all these devices. I, I know. Mean, we really are. I and know. I, I am literally not picking on any one of them. Uh, Microsoft, Apple, Google, pick your choice, Facebook, 
we are literally beta testers for them. Of course we are. I mean, look at uh, look at Google TV, for example. Google TV was a giant beta test that failed. Yeah. They just couldn't figure out what to do with it. They waited too long. They just didn't care for it. And all these people that committed to buying one uh, and these partners that committed to partnering with them and waited, because that was the other part of the story, that they had content partners set up uh, uh, many, you know, TV companies set up and they just never updated anything. And these companies, you know, Sony ate it and all these other companies ate it. Oh, well, they are the new Microsoft. I mean, that's what Microsoft did before with, uh, what do they call it? Um, web TV for windows mm -hmm. with windows media center eventually, um, with the various stores that they had in windows media player. I mean, you know, whatever channels on the IE desktop, you know, whatever. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. For a long time, yeah. Um, also, a new Chromecast is expected. Chromecast 2. Which, you know what, Paul? I, I've, been, I've been crapping on this thing for a long time. Three <laughs> times in the last two weeks, it came in handy. Really? Chromecast? Yeah. I very rarely use Chromecast. But okay. I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you I, a scenario. And you tell me. Yeah, okay. go ahead. I'm going to give you a scenario, and you tell me how it would have worked for me. Okay. I... I had a movie, not a movie. Um, it's actually you're gonna make fun of me, Paul. Okay. I I buy wrestling. They're called shoot interviews, wow. where the wrestler. I just want to, just want to, the key part uh, of that sentence was. Yeah. I buy. Buy. <laughs> okay. So yep. I I buy it online on demand. You could access it, and there there are these interviews that the wrestlers do talking about their entire careers and backstage stuff. So I got it all. Because, you know, this is what I do. I talk about pro wrestling. Um, okay. So I buy it. And I watch it. It's in a player in a browser. How can I watch that on the TV? Right. If they yeah, don't I, have an app, right. yep. and I'm on a Mac, and I don't have an Apple TV set up. Well, you're on a Mac. I'm on a Mac. Yeah, so, but I don't have an Apple TV. So you can do it. With, in other words, you use Chrome, and you use Chromecast to get it on the. I screen. use Chrome, and I just use Chromecast. Uh, you know, if yeah. you were on Windows, you could use Miracast. Same use thing. Miracast, yeah. You put it in a browser, full screen it, Miracast it. That would work. But actually, you know, I, to be fair to Chromecast, I mean, the Chromecast solution is more elegant um, in that you're not just duplicating the screen, you know. Uh, although from a browser tab, I guess you would be, right? From a browser, you are technically well, probably getting the screen. You are The way the Chromecast screen, works yeah. in apps is you're casting the content and then you can use the device, whatever on-screen controls, to control the playback, which I actually kind of like. You know, well, I like the Google fact that I can full screen it. I full screen it on in the browser and it doesn't full mm -hmm. screen it on my on my. On my actual browser, it full screens it on the display on the Chromecast, yeah. which is yep. great. But the problem with that is, for whatever reason, my CPU shoots up to 100% when I Chromecast on a Mac, uh, on an i7 Mac. So I don't know if that's just my computer. I don't know if that's Chromecast taking up a lot of CPU resources when you're doing this. But it is interesting that I could technically take my phone and just use my phone and do that with the phone. Um, right. It's good for people outside of the ecos. You know, if you have a if you have an Apple TV and you have a Windows laptop or desktop, it's going to be very difficult mm -hmm. for you to do that. So it kind of right. works in that sense for me. Uh, but I've been yeah, using actually, it. Yeah, actually, I mean, it's if amazing. you were completely within the Apple ecosystem, you could use an Apple TV with AirPlay. Could you? Could you? I don't know. Someone. That's what I mean. Me so I don't think you could. Well, uh, with Safari, can you use AirPlay to blast the screen to an Apple TV. I'm, I don't know enough about it. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Can maybe. you do it within Safari? I, I'm, I mean, I, I don't know because I've never done it. I bet it. you could. Yeah. I, the more, yeah. I could talk myself into this one. Yeah, you probably could do that. I'm embarrassed to say as a Mac user, I haven't gotten that, you know, that patch sure. on my on my jacket yet. <laughs> like the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, ecosystem yeah. achievement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. The other thing I'm really looking forward to is I'm announcing that they're sep totally separating Google Photos from... Yeah. Uh, Google Plus because it Finally, is absolutely ridiculous. Our five year nightmare, uh, you know, from from where we went from uh, Picasso Web or whatever it was called to Google Plus and finally back to Google Photos. It's actually uh, really convoluted for people that really don't understand how it works because yep. they actually think that they're taking their photos and they're uploading it to Google Plus right. when they're really not. Right. They are, but they're not. Like. Facebook gives you that option too. It says, "Hey, would you like to upload all your photos to Facebook? It will. It won't be public. It'll be private." Sure. But who feels confident enough to do that? I don't. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And, and I know this stuff, and I and I still don't want that to happen. I don't want. I want it to be a separate ecosystem. I want it to be totally separate than what my social, you know, networking uh, application is. And you haven't yeah. been able to do it. But with that said, Google Photos is a phenomenal application on the phone. I use it to edit photos all the time, and I do a better job with Google Photos than I do on my desktop because it's so quick. Right. Right. You know, I had to crop an image, and it would have taken me, you know, 20 seconds to set a five. I mean, it's it's a small, minuscule size of, uh, of a difference, but it makes a big difference in that sense. But I, I'm going to tell you, I've had this discussion with, every, with a lot of people that have uh, Google Photo, you know, they have an Android phone, and they don't upload to Google Photos. They don't back up yeah. their photos to Google Plus because they're afraid of it going to Google Plus. Yeah, like this being, like, they're afraid of it just being public. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, they should use OneDrive. <laughs> yeah, this is OneDrive. Nobody will get it there. Nobody, nobody will ever see it there. No one will ever see it because nobody's. <laughs> you know, Let's just leave it at that. Uh, connected homes are the other big thing that they're going to be doing. Um, you know, the smart home, the home of the future. Sure. Uh, which everybody's doing right now, and of course, uh, Google um, on the watch, uh, whatever they're calling it now. You know what the other thing was that they were going to do? And I thought this was interesting because Microsoft is doing this with uh, their, you know, s system on a chip type devices. What are they calling that version of Windows? Uh, like it, the, the Raspberry well, Pi I, Windows? I think it's just called Windows IoT Core. IoT Windows Core, 10 yeah. IoT Core. So Android is going to be doing that. And it's going to be almost a dumbed down version of Android that you could essentially do the same thing on these low powered, you know, devices. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> I can see I mean, that. Sure. Sure. So they're going to be doing that also. You you remind me. I was going to ask you a question. So with uh with that version of Windows, mm -hmm. as a developer, I could technically take a Raspberry Pi, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And put Windows on there, and set mm -hmm. it to run at startup my Windows application. Right. Yeah, it's called default app. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's In it. Fact, that's all it does. Yep. That's literally all it does. It's, yeah. It's it's like a direct one to one between the hardware and your app, essentially. Yeah. And whatever services you bring in. So I wonder, is this? I mean, this is interesting now. So like, look at a company like Roku. Yeah. Roku could implement this in their Roku boxes. They could become Windows based devices, which run <sighs> sure. based on the Windows App Store. I mean, I, I would imagine there are other um, hardware platforms that are a little more powerful, maybe. Uh, there may be advantages like, you know, I don't know what they're using, but I, you have to think that Roku is based on some kind of embedded Linux type thing. It, yeah, it's Linux. Yeah, uh, it's got to be, um, you know, and and there are concerns around RAM and storage and processor and all that kind of stuff. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, but I mean, you know, essentially, would, that's what's that's what's going to happen. Uh, just like how we're seeing this kind of this. We saw it happen, but it didn't really pick up uh, with yeah. these Android power TV set top boxes. Sure. Someone could technically make these mini, you know, Windows boxes that are running uh, just a certain amount of apps or their own platform of apps that people submit to that are running within Windows. I'd like Microsoft to make one that runs uh, Xbox Music and Xbox Video. But couldn't somebody you know, make that? I, I, maybe. I mean, um, the ability to get into the Xbox Music Store is available now. I don't know about Xbox Video. I'm not sure how open it is. Um, obviously, Microsoft could just do it. Um, Ideally, what they do is they, if they're, and by the way, if they're so serious about getting their stuff everywhere, I mean, how about targeting the set top boxes? Why don't we see those two services on Amazon Fire TVs, on Roku, uh, in the Chrome? Well, are they? No, yeah, well, they need to be on Android too. I yeah. mean, uh, music is, but it's terrible. Uh, you know, get video over there so you can Chromecast it. Yeah. You know, why not? It's interesting. Maybe that's next. Maybe that's where they keep going. Maybe they keep going, and that's part of it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious to see what kind of devices come from this. Yeah, I am too, actually. I, I, mean, could, have, I could have a GFQ device. You know, it just runs, <laughs> yeah. it just runs my yeah, app. That's very specific. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of it's going to be traditional embedded stuff, little weather station deals and, you know, remote cameras and stuff like that. But, yeah. uh, you know, home security or home automation type stuff is certainly possible. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, you know, it's funny when you think, I, I don't, it's a little, I can't reach it from here, but, you know, when you think about the size of a Raspberry Pi, it's, it's, it's tiny, but it's also, 
you know, it's not something you can stick in a pencil. It's, it's, you know, it's still like a, it requires some size. So uh, you might have to, you might want to build it into like a wall switch or something that you put inside a wall, um, you know, for home automation or whatever. It's not something you would, you know, it needs power. Yeah. Right? I mean, you, you would, you can't just like magnetize it onto the wall or something. It's, it's cause it's going to have stuff coming off of it. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, mean, I was just cool thinking, stuff. I mean, it's going to be an, it's, it's an interesting, uh, future for them if they if people start implementing this on on these devices you know the this the, this was the type of device that, that bill gates was thinking about when he came to home automation with the, you know the future of windows and the future of the internet sure. it was devices like this that were all running windows as the core operating system and they were you know powering your entire home and they were communicating with each other it's much it's going to be much easier I, for <laughs> For yeah. your your home desktop to communicate with all these devices if they're all running the same operating system, right, right. I don't know. Just thought out loud for a second. No, you're right. I, in fact, that ties into something I was just thinking about this morning, which is that uh, how nothing has really changed. You know, um, the, the names have all changed of the companies or the technologies and the products, but we're we're just doing the same stuff over and over. Yeah, again. it's yeah. a concept from twenty something years ago. Yeah, that that's yep. you know finally possibly happening. It's, they used to call it, uh, well, they used to call it Windows Everywhere, but before they called it that, they used to call it NT Everywhere. Yeah. You know, I think the the places it was going to go was a little more limited than we imagined today, but it was basically the same concept. Oh, the feature. It's, it's, the possibilities are endless. The feature always going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. You're watching the show a little early today on the GFK Network. If you're watching live, you're watching on demand. Guess what? That did not happen, and I did not say those words. Um, after the show, each and every week, we record a show called What the Talk. It's exclusive on Patreon. Patreon.com slash What the Tech is the URL. And uh, we do a little bonus show for you guys each and every week. Uh, we've been doing our Throwback Tuesdays. Paul's been saving them for the bonus show. And people are really enjoying these Throwback Tuesdays. The discussion and chat room while we're doing this is really, really cool because people are always reminiscing about them using the technology that we're talking about or, or you know, them never using it. They use another option uh, at the time. So it's always great to hear those stories. Uh, what was it last week that we did? We did. It, was, um, it, it really picked it up. It was steam. related to uh, what was it? Um, oh, the internet logging on. Just the internet. Yeah, we, was that it though? I can't remember. No, you brought up something, and then it turned into that. We were talking about. Well, because there were two halves. Uh, it, it was. Um, geez, I'm losing my mind. I am too. Don't worry. I had been thinking about the internet tidal wave stuff, which I finally wrote up today, not last week, like I intended. And the two halves of it were like devices and internet connectivity. Yeah, internet connect connectivity. And um, um, yeah, because I brought up the fact that I had um, I had the dual the dual bonded modems. Yeah. And it never yeah. worked. And almost every but every email that I got regarding that was I bought a, a modem like that from a computer show, and guess what? Did not work either. Right, like right. it was probably even fake. It probably who God knows what it was, you know. No, I, this no, no, no. I remember this. No, I remember um, the real ones. They were expensive. They're like 150, yeah. 200 bucks. I paid like twenty bucks for this thing. Oh, okay. So who knows what it was? So uh, we always have those fun discussions. If you want to watch that show, and if you want to tip us, you want to support the show. What we're doing, uh, what we're gonna do, I think, is if we hit the six hundred dollar goal, we're gonna set up an RSS so you guys could have an RSS and get this podcast uh, available on all these devices. Uh, we're going to try an experiment. If it works, it works. It doesn't, guess what? Well, it didn't work. Uh, so something we're trying to do, uh, you go to patreon.com slash what the tech. You can fund us a quarter, a nickel, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever you want to fund us, we will accept. Uh, and we're going to record the show in about, uh, 10 minutes. So, uh, stay tuned if you're watching live. If not, uh, you can watch it on Patreon. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple questions, Paul. So, and I wanted to see what you think of this. Mm-hmm. I'm buying a new car. My lease is my lease is expiring on uh, Justice Infinity, and okay. I want to get something new. The problem I'm having with all these cars is they're all the same essentially now. They all have the same thing. Every car is the same, but they all suck when it comes to technology. Yeah, nobody is doing it right. You're in a really bad spot. I really am because if I waited another year, in a year, all these cars are going to have Google yeah. the the Google uh, Auto, and they're going to have yep. the Apple Play, uh, Apple Car Play. So in I'm fact, in this screwed up situation right now. Yeah, I mean, I almost wonder if you shouldn't wait if you can, um, because that's about to get a lot better. I can't wait. I actually, I actually thought, can I extend my lease another year? Yep. I don't know if that's possible. You might want to find out. Because. 
everybody's about to change the way that they do, you know, in yeah. in car technology. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's so variable from car to car. I mean, hmm. so Honda is the first one to put uh, Android Auto in their car. Honda or Hyundai? Honda, Hyundai. 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 <laughs> Hyundai. 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 <laughs> Well, it's, I've heard Hyundai and uh, and and Hyundai. Depending on who who you talk to, they put in the Sonatas. Um, I remember looking at a Hyundai when they were new to America in, in 1987. Potential? Uh, wait, or was it 85? Well, I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the time. Anyway, um, you know what a piece of junk that thing was. The yeah. first one. You know, they're it's actually really nice now. It's it's crazy. It's the same. I, I was just talking to someone that bought a BC engine. There were Mitsubishi engines, yeah. At the time, yeah. Uh, I was just talking to someone that bought a new Hyundai, Hyundai, mm-hmm. and you know, one of our friends goes, "My God, you bought a Korean car? What are you nuts?" And I go, "This is." They, they said the same like about the, Japanese cars. I mean, yeah, exactly. I'm like, your dad said that about 25 years ago. Now you're repeating it. Th- this is the joke from uh, Back to the Future, where you know. Something is Japanese, and the people from the 1950s are like, those guys only make these little junky trinkets, you know? And it's like, yeah, not exactly. In fact, in the, 19, in the 1980s, we, America was obsessed with Japan, remember? Because they were going to they were gonna take over everything. It, it, it's, it's now, I mean, it's a Korean car, and it's as good as everything else that's being produced out there. So they're the first ones to put this in. Now, I'm in a really crappy position because nobody else is doing it right. So I don't know what to do. Right. Um, I don't want to go with a Ford. Uh, no offense to people that drive Fords. I just don't want to go with Ford because I, I'm not too crazy about their system either. So, I don't know. I, I would, I would probably be okay with the Ford thing. Um, hmm. You know, I went to go lease one uh, when they had uh, the new Edge because Jess didn't want to spend as much money. So I went, and it was much more than getting an Infinity for the lease. I really? could not believe it. They were asking in a, a, in a ridiculous amount for the car. Right. So at the end of the day, you're going to end up paying the same anyway, but I just don't know what to do if anybody has any recommendations. People are saying, why don't you go with a Jeep? Because Jeep actually has a, I don't know what's happening in our chat room. Do you, do you see this? Oh, my God. I can't see the chat. Our chat died, and then now it's coming back, and everybody getting, everybody's getting logged in at the same time. Um, and people are saying to go with a Jeep because Jeep does it well for what it is. So you're saying wait, at, wait another year. I think you should buy a 1986 Hyundai Excel. A Honda XL, that's what I need to get. It's got a Mitsubishi yeah. engine, so you know it's good. <laughs> I don't know. God. Listen, you're talking to a person that just went backwards in time technologically in my car. I have a radio. But but you, you know? have the you have the Volkswagen, don't you? Well, we have different cars. I mean I You have a newer reason, one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. But I mean my car will you know, will is or will soon will be only the, you know. This older Mercedes, so it's got a radio. It doesn't even have like an aux in in it. Like there's nothing. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I know there are add-on kits. In fact, there are sophisticated kits that will replace the radio and stuff yeah. uh, and look just like it. In fact, they're Mercedes parts. Um, but I don't know. You know, I don't know. I like I like to have the option. I, I think the biggest thing in the car is honestly navigation, not the content. But I would. I mean, I don't. I don't. Um, commute and they suck too. I mean, the navigation all, all sucks. I mean, um, for having for a phone. I mean, for, for, for the phone, yeah. yeah. The phone, the phone is great. The navigation on but the that's phone. That's why is the so Android car stuff for the uh, Apple Car, whatever they're calling it. What are they calling this? Stuff? Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay. What a terrible name. Anyway, whatever that stuff is, will be ideal because you'll be using apps on their you know phones. Yeah. Essentially. So I'm in this weird. In fact, Apple CarPlay right is apparently <laughs> apparently we didn't really realize this when they announced it, but. Apple CarPlay is really just the Apple Watch with a bigger screen. I mean, it's the same thing, right? You need same thing, front. yeah. 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 It's, it's actually really interesting how it is. Uh, so I'm in, that, I'm in that position right now where I don't know what to do. What do you think do. you're going to do? I don't know. Um, I, I'm, if, if I announce what, what I'm looking at, people are going to call me really obnoxious. So I'm not going to say it right now because I'm, not, I'm, I'm most likely not going to get it. But um, I, need, I think you absolutely need to say it. Because... Um, I was looking at a Range Rover. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. They're okay. inexpensive. They have the cheap ones. I would go they're with the inexpensive? cheap ones. They're inexpensive? Did yeah, you they, just say those words? It's, they have a cheap one. They have Is it a Range Rover or Land Rover? Range Rover. <laughs> they have a cheaper Range Rover now. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go with a Mercedes because they're. I don't like their uh, their navigation units. 
Okay. I actually want to go with a... Which uh, one's the cheap one? Is it Evoc? The Evoc, but just does not like that one. I see. I don't know anything about these. There's things. a sport yeah. that's a little cheaper, and they have a it's very an LR2. Good oh, a sport. Yeah, this is pretty expensive, but okay, fair enough. It's you know what it is. It's no it more expensive than a probably an Explorer is of the same. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, when you're leasing, they don't care. They're just giving those things away. It's the most yeah. insane thing. Like you go on a good day, you're going to get it for the same price that you buy, you know, a Chevy for. Which I I, w I like the new Chevys too. So if I bought a sedan, it'd be much better. I, I mean, look, uh, people don't buy things this way, but one of the things I do like in newer cars is when the mm. screen either pops up out of the dash or just sits on the top of the dash, rather than being a smaller screen in the dash, down in the dash. I think that, and I'm, I'm basing this purely on what I, you know, zero evidence, but I believe that that would be slightly less dangerous to look at that screen yeah. from time to time than. You know, when you're kind of looking down, trying to see the tiny, I don't know. Listen, for me, I, I just, I, I could drive a, I could drive a piece of crap. It doesn't matter. This is Jess's car. So she wants, you know, she has certain things that she wants with it. Sure. So, um, I, and I, all I want is to be able to connect my Bluetooth without having an issue. That's all I want. Oh, the, you can't be guaranteed. <laughs> Does not that. exist. Yeah. No, it may exist. You'll just never know. Yeah. Who knows? It, it's, it's so brutal. It, it's so brutal. Um, what I was thinking is, I wonder if they're going to make some sort of aftermarket adapter where you connect to the entertainment system, where it'll like override the screen, so you could actually buy like an Apple Apple Play device where it connects. So to I really, it. yeah, I really do think that stuff is coming, but not now. I mean, the next couple of years are just going to be about getting those into devices. Uh, I'm sorry, into vehicles directly, right? I mean, the aftermarket stuff will come, but I don't think because it's kind of. I mean, you could about get like a converter. Like, remember, they had, like, if you had XM or Sirius, you could actually get a converter that converted mm. one platform to the other for your in-dash navigation. Oh. So I'm wondering if you're going to be able to kind of do that where you could take it to a dealer and they put this mm. adapter in. So when you connect your phone, it overrides whatever their process is and it goes to uh, the Apple Play or whatever it is. And you just use their system. Right. It, it's such a it's such a pain in the ass. Like map, maps, they want to charge you $150 to update a map right? at the dealership. It's insane. How, why? Why do I have to pay for this? You shouldn't be using it. I just, use the, just use the thing in your phone. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, that I saw this week, and I thought it was interesting, Google Fiber sending out automatic fining, fine letters. They're fining people automatically that are downloading pirated software. They're getting a complaint from uh, one of their copyright holders. I... I just don't understand. Is that true? Yeah. That just doesn't seem possible. Does I, it? <laughs> I mean, I don't. How I, would they know it was you? They. I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's your IP, right? It's so, over your but address. How, I mean, yeah. So my question is, how do the copyright, I guess, fits uh, the movie? And let's say it's NBC Universal. How would NBC sure. Universal know that you're doing this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't this know sounds, if it's a non-story or what. crazy to me. See, I, I, it sounds wacky, but I'm curious how they're finding out that you're downloading stuff. Right. If you're downloading BitTorrent, how do they know that you're downloading a BitTorrent of, you know, the Van Halen album? And then blasting it on your phone while you're walking in a lobby in a hotel. <laughs> and thinking <laughs> yep. they're playing Van As Halen. As we all do. Yeah. You know. uh, I don't know. I, I'm I curious. I knew I wasn't on, the only one. I've done it a thousand times. But that's actually scary that they're going to be automatically finding you anywhere from twenty dollars to three hundred dollars. I don't get that in the letter. Let me see if I have the letter here. Google Fiber finds. I have the letter I sent. I, I saw before. Uh, Boy Genius Report. Uh, BMG will pursue. So this is one from BMG, for example. Uh, BMG offers suspected pirates to settle uh, any offer under blah blah blah. So they're pretty much going to charge you anywhere, anywhere from twenty dollars to three hundred dollars. BMG says BMG will pursue every available remedy, including injunctions and recovery for attorney fees, costs, and any other and all damages which are incurred by BMG as a result of any, any action. And what, yeah. What are, what are the damages might occur? The, to talk about uh, the how legal are these department. damages evaluated? Yeah. Uh, in in the order to help you avoid any other legal. Legally. 
Yeah, look at this. In, in order to help you avoid further legal action from BMG, we have been authorized to offer a settlement solution that we believe is reasonable for everybody. So this is actually... I, I'm curious if all the ISPs are going to follow with this. This is insanity. Like, does it really... Uh, so every kid that's going and downloading stuff, they're just going to start getting hit with legal letters from the ISP. I, 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 I just don't understand. I, I don't get this. I just don't get this. Yeah, so that was... Um, that was interesting. I mean, I'm the point of getting Google us. Fiber would be so you could steal everything. I mean, I, what is, <laughs> yeah. am I missing something here? Yeah, I just want to download it all. So hmm. I don't know. I just, um, hmm. I'm curious to see what happens with this and if this right. is actually something that happens. They may be just trying to scare you at first, but sure. it's going to be really hard to prove that you, did, you were the one downloading it. Right. Uh, so you don't even have to download music. They could just offer you a settlement so you could save the attorney fee and fight it. Yeah. You don't even have to do anything. You're just getting money. I don't know. And uh, Charters is buying Time Warner. Yeah. So that merger, the first merger didn't go through, but this one will probably go through. The first one was... Uh, Comcast. Comcast? Yeah. yeah. Which got thrown out. So it's, it's amazing good. that it happened so quickly. So that means that this merger was on the back burner. Like, listen, if we can't get the Comcast deal to work, this we is what we're going to do. Plan B, you know? Yeah. So uh, the ISPs are getting smaller and smaller. I'm curious if this is going to create some sort of, like, revolution where you're going to have, like, micro providers, you know? Just people buying up bandwidth and, and just selling it in their local communities. Just having a much smaller ISP. So... Those actually exist. They do, um, yeah, and they do quite well. The, the problem is they're often monopolies. Like uh, the, the friends of ours we have who live in the next town over don't have a choice of carriers. They just get whatever the town sanctioned one is, and has I don't remember, I don't know the name of it. I apologize, but you you have no choice if you want cable, uh, TV, and internet, and probably phone. You go with these guys. And yeah. That's all. Your, I guess you could get Dish or something. Like there's no. It's just what the town. The town has some. Uh, contract with this firm, whatever they are, and the municipality uh, is is yeah. responsible for this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Um, I, and I, I, you know, I don't actually think that's great, to be honest. And, and consolidation is natural, but at some point, you know, you want to avoid like the monoculture issue. But couldn't couldn't Google technically say, okay, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come in and we're going to supply the pipe to you guys to a smaller yep. ISP. They're going to give them with, ten, let's say, 10, gigabit, 10 gigabytes a second. And you're oh, going to be able to spread this out amongst you know, your community. So that's your cap. Your cap is that much, and that's all you're going to get at the time. That is your max speed. Like a speed. cricket or a boost for... Yeah, like a smaller, like a smaller ISP. Wired, so Therot, yeah. Therot ISP in Denim could you know, supply uh, sure. 100 customers with you know, a couple, couple megabits here and there. And it's going to be much cheaper just hmm. to fight... Uh, the, the, it's a, the, the man the, the monopoly yeah because it, it is a monopoly <laughs> i mean you have yeah. no other options right and regulation doesn't really work because they've been trying to regulate this for years and they can't because the isps but those and companies the, they're not dumb pipes sander they like to they sell services yeah. and they have apps isn't that they, amazing they have stuff well that's why yeah. verizon's buying aol I, I, we got an ad on the TV the other day to buy a movie from whatever Verizon Fios's on demand system is called. Who cares? And I looked at my wife and I was like, why? Why would anyone buy a movie from this company? Right? I mean, if everything goes right in our lives, we will not be on Fios for the rest of our lives. By the way, like, that I, movie goes away also because it's a rental. Oh, no, you can buy it. I mean, oh, you can buy I, it. You can buy it, but it's attached to your Verizon account. Okay. And it's like, ugh, like I, you know, the content providers that I do business with directly are not, you know, they will uh, persist beyond my current internet access. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, it's just weird to me. I, it doesn't seem, they're so desperate to be Apple when in fact they're just the gas company. You know? Yeah. Well, I got, a, get it. I got a, I got an ad from Verizon. Uh, by the way, Verizon is sponsoring today's show, so just uh, so, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I got an ad no, from no, Verizon. I'm not, I'm, I'm, no, 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 not that I'm going to bash them. If I if I was, I, I would. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. Even I am matter. using Verizon Files. I yeah. am, you know, but I, I find it interesting that they're trying to sell these services. You know, 
Um, it, what what I did find interesting is that Verizon FiOS had an ad here in here, here in New York for a la carte service. Yeah, and uh, it, it was it, it wasn't called a la carte. It was called like viewers' choice, whatever you want to pick, you could pick. And I'm really curious on are people actually going to do this? Are people going to actually go and pick? I don't even know how their a la carte works at this time. Uh, let me see Verizon FiOS packages. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how the a la carte well, works because I may. Is this I may you just, pay? I mean. I may just turn I everything off. I don't. I don't want so, anything. All I, I want, want is USA. I don't want a la carte for some two-year contract. I mean, you ever do this thing? You're kind of clicking around on TV. Like we get most of the channels. Like right? we. It seems like we have a pretty healthy package of, you know, channels. Right. So I'm clicking around on the. In the we have all the movie channels and everything. And but I'm up in the upper numbers, not in the movie channels, but kind of just below those. And I'm, I click. I can't. I wish I could remember what it was, but. You get that screen that says, oh, you don't get this channel. Do you, if you want to you think this is a mistake, hit the blue button or whatever. And I'm thinking, you know, first A, I find it odd that I don't get this channel because I'm already paying for all this yeah. stuff. But B. Who's getting this channel? Well, so, yeah. In other words, some people are paying for this stuff. I mean, this must be part of a package that's not the movie channels, but these other kind of, a, uh, you know, like business classes to first class or something. And, uh, you know, I really want to watch this thing. Could I just pay? Could I get it for the day? Could I get like a day pass? <laughs> you know, could I get a, it seems like if they made it easy, a lot of people would buy into it. You know, like we're used to being home at night and saying, I'm going to run a movie on Apple TV or something. Like what if I'm clicking around on the Fios lineup and it's like, I yeah. want to, there's a movie on some channel. I would pay, I'd pay for it, you know? Okay. Custom TV really lineup. Do that. Here we go. Are you ready for this? Choose two channel packs Additional channel packs are $10 more a month. So custom TV. Let's see the custom TV channel pack. There's lifestyle, entertainment, news info, pop culture, kids, sports, sports plus this. You know what this reminds me of? Do you remember that, uh, that mock-up that someone made about net neutrality and if it doesn't pass, what well, we're going to see with the ISPs? Yeah. This is exactly what it looks like. It, right, right. It's actually really funny. So they're not individual channels. They're like themed sets of channels. Theme. Let me see. No, no, Basically, you. right? Okay, get many popular base channels and all the local. So the local is part of it. So you can sign up for lifestyle and something else. Lifestyle. So lifestyle would be lifestyle. Which one is USA? So entertainment is USA. So I need yeah. that one. And I would probably do news and info. So that's two. It's and a then buffet. It's a little buffet. You get, you and then get I would three do three sides with this meal. Andrew. Yeah. They could be USA Network. You could get uh, you know, Comedy Central. But it doesn't say how much the starting price is. Right. All right. We could do this for hours. But we gotta wrap it up, Paul. Maybe we'll do it in the after show. Let's see. Uh, go to our website, gfknetwork.com. Guys, if you miss any portion of the show, be sure to subscribe to us. We're everywhere podcasts are available. It really helps us out when you subscribe to the show. We have an SD version, an HD version, and an audio-only version. Uh, we're on every single application you could possibly imagine. So uh, check us out wherever. Uh, leave us reviews if it asks you for a review. You know what? Give us a little review. Give, say, you know, I like Andrew's hair this week. It looked really nice on What the Tech. <laughs> Since he stopped wearing a big headphone, he doesn't get like that weird uh, crunchy mark in his hair. So, uh, A plus for his hair. Uh, you could do that. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. You can follow Paul at The Rot on Twitter. Uh, Paul also does a phenomenal podcast called Windows Weekly every Wednesday at 2 p.m. East on the Twit Network. Uh, Therot.com, all things Paul Therot. He's always busy writing away over there. And uh, that's it for this week, guys. We'll see you all next week. Take care.